Let's see if it's gonna kick me off yet. Forgive me, guys. I'm eating In and Out. If you guys live in California or near California, you guys know what In and Out is. It's the best goddamn place to eat in the world. Of course, I got my go go juice. Okay, it's so gonna let me stay alive. Cool, thanks. Go ahead and start. So, I want to go ahead and talk about a couple things real quick. So, first of all, I want to say thank you to everybody who's following me and supporting me. It means the world to me. And because of that, I'm getting messages by the hundreds. I'm getting people um, sending me things that they want me to talk about. I'm getting things, people sending me things that they have questions about. I have people sending me things saying, Oh, girl, what do you think about this? So, um, I think I'm going to be doing this about once a day. If I want to keep up with you people, because I want to be nice to everybody and I want to always, like, I, co I try coming back to as many people as possible, but also I want to be good to everybody and um, touch base on subjects and issues that you guys feel about. Because I'm noticing something. I think what I'm doing right now is a good thing because I think what's happening here is that you guys are seeing me as a, um, like a tool. Like for instance, like I'm saying a lot of things that a lot of people are thinking. And I know that, that can be shocking to some. I, th I know that a lot of people have privately messaged me and said like, thank you so much. I've totally felt that way, but I didn't want to say it out loud because I had people that would hate me or friends that would hate me. But I just want to know, I just want you to know that I love you for that. And it's great to know that somebody agrees with me. So I think I'm there for that reason, but I don't know. Regardless, I'm going to do this once a day. How? So get used to me. And um, I have a meeting next week. Actually, we're going to be talking about putting on a production. So I might be actually starting a show soon. But that's all thanks to you guys. Thank you guys so much for all the support you guys have given me. And I really appreciate it all. And I want to just first start off this video today with um, two things. One, um, I've learned so much from the um, Republican Party. It's insane. Um, I think that I've learned that these people are not what I was told that they were. I think that I've learned that they're loving, great people. And um, another thing I've noticed that I've mentioned before in past videos, but um, I really want to iterate on because I think that everybody can learn from this as human beings. I think it's crazy that um, when somebody on the left, they're not bad people per se, but when somebody on the left is proven wrong about something, they will do whatever it takes to make them right. And today I had um, a little bit of a, I thought, educated um, debate with a person and they ended it with, because I, they kept trying to come up with lie after lie after lie and I kept like debunking and showing them proof and showing them proof and I didn't think that was a bad thing. I thought it was educational. I thought I was teaching them something. Um, and they ended it with this. Yeah, well, fuck Trump. <laughs> so I've noticed that about the left, and I'm, I wish I could say only some of them do that and some of them don't, but they all do that. And I have yet to meet somebody who's willing to debate with me or talk with me that is actually level-headed and w willing to um, accept when they're wrong, um, like I am. When I'm wrong and they prove me wrong, I do, I apologize. But I know somebody else is very apologetic as well. People on the right. So every time I post one of these videos, as you guys know, my last video got about 12,000 people that watched it. Thank you guys so much. That video went viral, it was awesome. But that video, I noticed I did get a very far and few between, which is really weird because I normally get a lot of hate. It was very far and few between. I got some hate comments um, from some people and um, I said some pretty mean stuff back because I was kind of frustrated and just done with it. So when somebody said like, like one person said, stay out of my daughter's bathroom. I was like, bitch, if you even know me, you know I'm against fucking sharing bathrooms too. I said, yeah, I was pissed. I was pissed. I said, but you have a daughter? I said, with your ignorance, you make me really rethink the abortion fucking stance. I said, and if your daughter decides to have kids, then you really got me questioning my stance on abortion. But I was just being mad and being a dumbass bitch and I was being stupid. So, that being said, when that argument happened, this man, mind you, was a burly big man, right? He came back to me and apologized and said, I reread, I, he said, I finally watched your video and I actually heard what you had to say. He said, I want to say sorry because I was out of line. I should not have done that and I take full responsibility for this and I'm very sorry for what I said. Mind you, I said stuff about abortion. Like, I said horrible things. I said things about, like, his children. Like, I should never have said that either. Like, that is, I feel horrible. But the Republicans have had a way with me to where they've made me, they've been able to apologize to me to where it makes me think what I'm doing. And what that, what's happening with that is a chain reaction. And so um, I wanted to kind of bring that up at the beginning of this video because I wanted you guys to know that um, that's the difference between the Republican Party and the left is that I've been finding so much more love in the Republican Party. I never thought I'd say that in a million years, but holy shit, there's so much love there and they're so accepting. And I think that if we want to change minds, if the gay community does not like things that the Republican Party is doing, I think the only way to change the minds of the Republican Party is to enter the Republican Party. And what I've noticed is that not only do I align with most of their values and their beliefs and their... Um, I feel like Republicans, we don't have beliefs. We have common sense. But that's besides the point with their beliefs. And I find that um, 
the gay community hates them only because of the way that they, um, some of them, a very small percentage of them, think about the gay community. Now, the only way to change their minds is to enter their world. Now that I have, because of the fact that, again, our um, values align, I'm really, I'm seeing every day, there's thousands of them, literally, th I wish I could say there's a smaller number, but literally so many of them are telling me daily, like messaging me privately, I can't even get back to all the messages. Sorry to those out there, I did not message back, but there's so many, it's crazy. I just got six, like, sitting here. Anyways, so I want you guys to know that um, they've been saying things like, wow, I never supported a gay person until I met you, or wow, I didn't understand my gay daughter until I met you, or wow, I didn't understand why my son wanted to do drag until I saw your videos. And that's a very humbling experience for me. I want to talk about one experience in particular that happened to me um, actually today. A woman from New York, from Long Island, New York. I love people from Long Island, like they're so cool. But this one lady from Long Island today, I'm going to read it to you guys. I'm, I'm not going to say her name because I don't know if she wants to be named, but I don't think she would care, judging by the way she messaged me. Yeah, I'm going to say her name. So <laughs> this lady was so sweet, so amazing, and I'm so happy like, I got a chance to meet her. So let me go to the um, thing. I have messages like, coming from four different like sources. So let's do uh... Okay, so I'm on the page. But this was really touching to me because I, I really thought like, wow, people out there really are not what we thought they were. And they're not what I was told they were. And this lady's name is Lily Von Stupt. I'm sorry if I said her name wrong. Can you see it? Lily Von Stupt. I don't know how to say her name, but I hope I didn't say it wrong. She's really sweet. She just told me, she goes, I just discovered your Facebook page. I want to say that you are a beautiful example of humanity. My real name is Karen. I am 52 years old, a suburban mom from Long Island, New York. If I had not watched your video, I might have just looked at you and assumed you were just the typical crazy leftist. I am so incredibly ashamed of myself for that. Very ashamed. I want to thank you for reminding me of who I truly am. The world since 2016 election has got me so stressed and hardened me a bit. I hate that I have become cynical because it really goes against my nature. I love all good people. You are a good person. I have been so emotional and fearful lately because of everything going on. Your video flipped the light on in the part of my heart that was darkened. Thanks for the bitch slap that I so desperately needed. LOL. I never was a person to judge someone by anything other than their actions, and I never want to be. With President Trump, we have a chance at a beautiful world full of peace for everyone. I pray the rest of the world wakes up to see this truth. If you are ever in New York, send me a message. I'll buy you a nice dinner. Peace. So that's one of the messages I got from somebody on the right, and that was so beautiful and so amazing. That's just one of the very, very many. Like, we can go on all day, girl. Like, I ain't got all day, but we can honestly go all day. Some of them are really beautiful. And um, one person did it out of the blue, says, kick ass live just now. Appreciate it every moment. Thank you for speaking the truth. That's really cool. Like, it makes me feel so good about myself and about other people. And um, hearing things like, for instance, from veterans and stuff, like one person um, messaged me was a veteran, um, Martin Rickert. I have, if you're watching, hey, but um, so Martin they got on here as well, messaged me privately and told me about how him and his wife, he's a veteran, how him and his wife both watch my videos and they love and support me so much and that they really have always supported people of, um, that are gay and trans and such like that and that um, they think that what I'm doing is great. So that's really awesome. Um, I also get a lot of people on here though that come on here and tell me things like, wow, I didn't support gay people until I saw your videos or, you know, I would have judged you right away. One of them actually is watching right now. Oh my God. Oh! I see her picture, but it doesn't say her name because I'm on my, like, other, I'm on my computer. So let's see. But you're watching. I see you right there. You, uh, Melissa Sue. Okay. So Melissa Sue. I hope you don't mind Melissa Sue, but I'm going to talk about, um, you, when you also commented to me. Now I didn't, um, let me see if I saved it actually. Melissa Sue is really awesome too. And she was really honest with me. Just like all the, everybody on the right has been super honest and really apologetic. And when I say super honest, I mean in the beginning when they're like, hey, fuck you, you're a fucking queer yeah they're being honest and then they always end up coming back with and saying publicly that they're sorry they did people on the right have no problem admitting when they're wrong that's the whole point of this people on the right have no problem admitting when they're wrong people on the left they will die fucking they will die right no matter what bitch even if you fucking said the sky ain't pink they will die and they will go to the grave knowing that the sky is pink to them no matter what and they won't give a fuck what you think and in the end if they have nothing else they'll end up with fuck trump but anyways back to melissa sue so melissa sue is really fucking sweet and um, she was like, wow, you know, like, I, I'm not quoting because I didn't save the comments, but so Melissa, if you're watching. But um, anyway, so she did say something along the lines of, she was, wow, I would have looked at you and thought you were a total leftist. I would have totally, like, rolled my eyes. 
But then um, when I listened to you within the first two minutes, she said I was captivated. And um, because of that, it was like awesome that she said that because then she made me feel really good about myself. And then she said that she really agrees with what I've been saying and that she really likes my truth that I'm speaking. So I really, really appreciate people like Melissa, Melissa Sue. And there's so many of them. Cynthia White. Cynthia's another one. Um, Cynthia's a really cool friend as well. Um, I've talked to Cynthia and her whole family and they're, they're really, really good people. Um, I just want to say people on the right have been so good to me. Thank you guys so much. And I appreciate you all so much. I wish my friends that were on the left, because I have none now, I wish when I had friends, like when all of you guys, some of you are watching right now. I see some of you on there. That used to be my friend. You remember when you guys were my friend, you guys hated me now because I'm on the right now? Like as if I was so different. Like I've always been on the right, but you just never asked me. Anyways. So, um, they all hate me and they'll do whatever it takes to make sure that they're right, um, no matter what. They'll smear me in any way, shape, or form. Any chance they get, they go above and beyond to fucking show that they hate me. And I don't care. But people on the right have been so welcoming and so loving and so everything that those people watching right now, some of the leftists that are watching right now that hate me now, that were my friends, they really, really convinced me that people on the right were evil. That these people were so bad for humanity. That, oh, they don't believe in global warming. They think we should die. They're only for white men. Shut up. You're wrong. Completely. I've met so many women. I've met so many people of different nationalities, different colors, different races, different, different everything. And they all are so supportive and loving. And the reason why you never hear um, them having to say, we're not racist, is because we don't need to defend ourselves. Because if you look, just open your mother and left eyes. Like, you will see there's Indian Republicans, there's Black Republicans, there's um, Mexican Republicans, there's whole groups for these people. And it's not small groups, like the small group of little rednecks that you think all the fucking Republicans are. No, these are real people, and these are real families, and these are real American fucking lives that I'm speaking about. And they are the most loving, great people, and the ones who haven't been that loving have been very apologetic. So I want to just give it up for you guys. Hi. So I think you guys have been great. Thank you guys so much. So let's go ahead and get on to some of the issues I want to talk about real fast. Now we got 42 of you, 46 of you guys watching. So some of the issues I want to talk about today was, um, some of the things that really struck me today was Black America. Now, I don't know what y'all think about Black America, but I'm going to tell you what I think about Black America. Holy shit, they're waking up. Good morning! Black America is waking the motherfucker up because all you are, all you are seeing it everywhere. And I think that um, Donald Trump has now put more black people into the White House at one time, more than Obama ever did. Just saying. Just saying. So I want to show you guys a video or two about um, this situation. And I know a lot of you guys don't, don't like Candace Owens, so I'll show you the Candace Owens second. But I love Candace Owens. Oh my god, I love Candace Owens. Can we have more Candace Owens, please? Like... If you guys know her, tell us the hey girl. I would love to do a video with you. Hit me up. But yeah, anyways, so let's go ahead and look at these videos of Black America. Black America is waking the fuck up. Now, this is a video that I personally love, and because this guy was just talking out of his heart in a hallway. And I want to show you guys this video. His name is JoJo Simmons. Tony X and JoJo Simmons. So I wanted to show you guys him. Because he what he says is, you guys think I'm woke, this motherfucker is woke, and he is talking truth. Yep. They can afford to live there and do the same shit. They're removing us. Now they're talking about illegal fucking aliens, bro. Yep. Because we didn't vote for Hillary. Yeah, if we came out the vote, Hillary would have been president. But this bitch stole $10 billion from Haiti. The whole hood know that bitch wicked. I wasn't the, whole, the whole hood know that bitch wicked. So the whole hood. Uh, so yeah. Barack Obama, all they foil plans to try to throw all of us in fucking slavery and have us move for all the one on it. It ain't working. So now what they got to do? They got to get a bunch of fucking illegals to come in here to replace the black man. Because yep. exactly. we're not going for it. Exactly. We got activated. We mad. And the thing is, they don't, want, they don't want us to be mad at the white people. Because once we do, we chasing their ass down the street. Yep. They can't run from yep. us. They can't duck us. There's, there's no running from us. The only people who've been fucking us over are the people we've been voting for. They've been in our hoods. They had to be, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to do this for 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 you. I'm going
I seen was little black boys getting body. That's what everybody. That's what everybody. Yeah. Bush, was, Bush was not a Republican. Bush is a globalist. Bush is a globalist. There's a difference between the two, okay? Bush is not a Republican. He's a globalist. He's a globalist. I'm not picking sides with Republicans who's doing fuck shit. He's a globalist. That's who he is. He's not a Republican. The reason why we're free and we're here holding phones and talking is because Republicans fought for our freedom. The KKK was founded by the Democrats. They killed over 3,000 blacks and over 2,000 whites that were sitting there fighting for blacks. And they hung those whites and those blacks together and castrated them together. And we don't talk about that because the Democrats don't want people to know that this is their legacy. Let me ask you a question. Who here wants to be a Nazi? No one. You know why? Because they know what their history is. Let me tell you the Democrats' history. The Democrats started slavery. They started, they started white supremacy. It was called Manifested Destiny, and it was started in 1930 by Andrew Jackson, yep. the first Democrat, yep. who taught that white people were superior to everyone else. Then they started in front of the KKK, King. Yep. They said, oh, we don't like niggas. Segregate them. Yep. Then when it came for desegregation, they said, no, nah, we're not with that shit. When it came for voting, they said, no, we're not with that shit. When it came for women rights to vote, they said, no, we're not with that shit. But all of these things that happened was because Republicans said... We with that shit. Yeah. Fuck that. Boom. Give them what they're supposed to have. Boom. I'm not saying you gotta you gotta be a Republican or a Democrat. All I'm saying is use your mind. The media don't love us. When they, when they smoke us and we innocent, they showing our mug shots. They're not showing our family Facebook pictures with our family and all that shit. Amen. Now women talking about antiques for black people. The motherfuckers are not for black people. No. At all. They are a bunch of white college kids whose privilege get paid twenty some dollars yep. and sit outside and fuck up property they don't even own, bro. And then they paint it on us. Whenever white boys are outside and they fucking Democrats and they fucking shit up, that's just a bunch of kids who are letting off steam. But whenever we outside and we fucking mad, we a mob. We gangsters. We thugs. That's the media doing that shit up. us. The only media station that's ever given us anything for the streets, which was Street Soldiers by Lisa Evans, was Fox 5, and nobody even pays attention to it. Fox News, by the way. And Lisa Evans is in the hood. Yeah. And she's on Fox 5. So niggas is telling you that Fox is out of the third. But Fox give a fuck about the hood. Low key. And nobody's saying nothing about it. I appreciate you coming here, bro. I appreciate you. Oh. So that video was really grounding to me. I think that he hit the nail right on the head with that one. You are right, Cynthia. Because I think that that one is crazy right. And whoever the fuck just commented something about... My, I normally don't read the comments. But I don't, mm, bitch, I don't do well with no fucking, I don't do well with racism, I don't do well with fucking homophobia, I don't do well with fucking hate. You ain't gonna do that shit on my motherfucking time, bitch. Anthony Moore, fuck you. First of all, I'm gonna fucking laugh at your motherfucking comment, but I'm gonna ban you as well, because I just don't like you, okay? Okay? Anyway, so, um, what I have to say about that is that this is insane, and I'm very, very happy, because these are things I've been saying forever, but when I say it, of course I can't say it because I'm white, which is bullshit, because you know who says I can say it? My black counterparts, my friends so far that have been watching my videos have been telling me things that they love, have been telling me, um, I actually was asked to speak more about the situation today by, um, a friend who does watch my videos, and, um, they did, me they did mention that, they know it's happening, we're talking about it, and it's a big thing right now, and it's huge right now, because why? Because they just had the, um, young black Republican summit at the White House, and, um, the videos were so amazing, by the way, if you guys don't know me, if you guys don't know about my upbringing, I did not grow up in Orange County, California, I moved here when I was 17 years old, and I got emancipated, but before that, I grew up in a small town, where I grew up at, um, was, it's mainly black, and I grew up in a black neighborhood, I was one of the only, like, white kids in my neighborhood, but, um, that's who I sit at home with, because that's, like, that's who I was raised by, so, um, the thing about that is that I believe that this guy was right, Every single step of the way and every single statement he made was complete right Fox is the only motherfucking news station that ever goes to the hood That's that's fact and um, nobody wants to talk about that But they all want to say Fox is bad and They want to tell people in the hood that Fox is bad Democrats go to the hood all the time You don't see Republicans to the right You don't see Republicans walking through the motherfucking hood You will not see a Republican leader going through the hood saying vote for me Doesn't happen Doesn't happen doesn't happen. But why is one of those reasons why it doesn't happen? Because their safety is always compromised because of the fact that Democrats are going door to door and motherfucking in the hood talking about, we're going to save you. Why have you been saying this for so many years, but you haven't saved no motherfucking buddy? And then the reason why nobody wants to be a Nazi, his, this is the best point I ever heard. He said, why does nobody want to be a Nazi? He said, do any of you guys want to be a Nazi? Of course nobody wants to be a Nazi. Why? Because of their history, right? Well, let's talk about the Democratic history. Who started slavery? Who didn't want slavery to end? Who wanted segregation? Who didn't want women to have rights? Who thought that it was okay to fucking beat Rodney King in the motherfucking streets? Democrats. Who the fuck started the KKK? Democrats. I mean, and I don't care 
what people say about that great myth switch because I've already debunked that so many fucking times and out of everybody who switched, um, if you want to bring it down to the source of it being only about the um, about 10 senators that were talking about switching at the time and there was only one that switched or if you want to talk about it on a bigger scale when it was everybody in government, the 240 people that were in government during the time of the big switch and only 18 of them switched out of 240, the big switch is a big fucking scam and a big fucking lie but it's worked for so many fucking years and he's right. I do think, I never thought about it from this angle but do you guys think that he's right when he says the reason why they want the illegals to come up here, the reason why they're saying talking about illegal um, citizens is because of the fact that they're losing the black vote, which is fact. Did you guys know the black fucking um, support for Donald Trump has went from 4% up to the 30s? Like, I don't know if you guys know anything about math, but that's a gigantic gap. A big win for us, a big win for the black community because they're tired. They're tired of it because if Democrats were in office, which they were for eight fucking years, nothing happened better for their communities. They started Black Lives Matter. Everybody was marching all across America inside of these major metropolis cities in their downtown districts. Everybody was marching saying Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. Albert, Al, the Reverend Al Sharpton had people donating by the millions. Motherfucker ended up in Forbes magazine this year for the first time. Got the new Tesla. But ain't not one community got any of that money. Not one, bitch. Like, not one black community member got any of that money. Where did the money go? Oh, well, Reverend Al Sharpton ended up in Forbes magazine. Reverend Al Sharpton also wants to talk shit about that fucking black summit at the fucking White House. Those are your own people. Are you kidding me? Like, bitch, you crazy. Out. Mm -mm. So Reverend Al Sharpton went on motherfucking... CBS and said, I think that it's staged. They're all wearing red hats. I think that Trump put them in red hats and told them it was a photo op. No, bitch. There's black people who really believe in America. There's black people who are sick of being beaten down in America. There's black people who are sick of your victim mentality and telling people that they are not ever going to amount to anything. They're sick of the fact that the Democratic Party wants to make videos saying, why do you guys want, want people to be ID'd for votes? Because black people don't know how to get IDs. What the fuck? Black people are, are totally capable. In fact, they're more than capable. Black people have fucking risen so high up that why are we even still talking about the situation? The past president was black. He wasn't a good president, but that had nothing to do with the skin color. That had nothing to do with the skin color. Clearly, black people are not suppressed. Have you ever watched an entertainment fucking anything? Have you ever listened to music, bitch? Black people run the entertainment fucking industry. Black people rule the music industry. But they want you to think that they're so suppressed. My favorite person to ever watch was, Con was um, not Kanye West, I know y'all think he's crazy, but I loved what Lil Wayne said. Lil Wayne said, Lil Wayne was amazing. He was sitting there, right, drinking his juice, you know, his scissor up. And the reporter was like, how do you feel about Black Lives Matter? Do you think that, um, that black people are targeted and suppressed in this country? And he said, bitch. His exact words, bitch. You're white. <laughs> you asking me questions. That motherfucker over there holding the camera, he's white. That motherfucker over there holding those lights, he's white. Y'all watching me. He's like, bitch, I ain't suppressed. I ain't suppressed. Or you guys can do it on a little bit less offensive level with less cuss words, I guess. And you guys can look at people like, um, um, like, what's his name? Um, he plays God in like every movie. He's black. Oh, yeah, I can't believe I forgot his name. Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman also said it really well. Um, they said, Morgan Freeman, do you believe that black people are suppressed in this country? And he said, no. Fuck no. He said, today, no. He said, I was born in Alabama to a really poor family. He said, I worked my ass off to get to where I am. And America gave us those rights today. And he looked over at the cross table, the guy asking him the questions, who's also white, saying, me and you both are proof of this. We are proof. We are both proof that we can equally get big in life. We are, we are proof that you don't need to have a certain skin color to be successful. That's a lie and that's an excuse. Black people are waking up. They're seeing it. Good morning. And I stand with them. I do not stand with the Black Lives Matter group. I knew and I researched it and I told everybody from the beginning, you ain't getting that money and they didn't get the money. Oh, Reverend Al Sharpton got the new, got the new Tesla. Hey, Reverend. And he goes on national television and says how it's a stage event, putting down his own people's progress. Like, bitch, there's more black people in the White House than there ever has been before. You better celebrate, motherfucker. Like, the fuck? Say it's stage because they're all wearing red hats. They're wearing red hats because they support our president, bitch. That's why they wear red hats. Okay? But, Let's get back to the thing at hand. The thing at hand is this. Black people, if you think that you are suppressed by American system, systemic um, suppressions, it's wrong. You all are just as important as anybody else. Don't let the Democrats fool you, though. You ain't no better than nobody else. 
Gays, comment the fuck down. You should be the first one to listen to that one. Equality does not mean that one group is better than another group. And I think we all have got that fucking misconstrued and fucked up, bitch. Because women, you do mean something. You are not better than men. Sorry. Men, you ain't better than women. Sorry. Blacks, you ain't better than whites. Sorry, whites, you ain't better than blacks. And guess what? Every American's American again. That's all we are. We should stop judging each other based on our looks. Bitch, one day I'm gonna come on here with long hair and makeup. Next time I'll come on here and look like a man like I do right now, like a mess. But I'm gonna tell you something. You will respect me as a human being and you will respect me as an American citizen because that's all I am. I got this tattoo for a reason. I'm human. I'm human. If you wanna label me, you gotta figure me out, you gotta put me in your box, don't. Because bitch, I won't fit there. I, I don't fit in nobody's box I, at, at all, ever. And instead of me being sad about the fact that I don't ever know nobody like me, I'm going to celebrate it, and I'm going to be an individual, and I'm going to be an American and celebrate Americans as a whole. We need to come together as a whole, not split apart, not fucking segregate, not fucking label each other these labels. Drop the labels. Drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it. Black America is tired of it. And the only difference between black America and other minority groups is that black ones will whoop your ass, okay? <laughs> That's fact. That's fact, bitch. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Anyway, so, um... I thought that was a great video to watch, and now I'll go, I'm going to go ahead and show the one that, I know you guys have judged Candace Owens, but I love her so much, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this video because it's true again. It says, Candace Owens, the truth teller. I love her so much, she cannot be any cooler than I think she is now. I grew up on the welfare system, I know. Remember how I talked about that big gap of the people who are literally um, supporting, um, the black people that are supporting Donald Trump? And I said the, the gap is like this. It was 4%, now it's in the 30s. And I said, that's a huge gap. Well, what do you guys think about the fact that the single motherhood was in the 30% just a couple of fucking decades ago, and all of a sudden, it's in the 70%. You guys want to talk about systemic racism. Like the video you saw before that. Who's in the ghettos? Who's in the hood? Not the Republicans. The Democrats. So who does know those numbers? Just saying. They removed the black father from the home because they knew that once you break down the family, you can control. You can control the youth that are growing up. They gave us hip hop. They gave us the media. They didn't give us the facts. They lied to us in school. They told us that the Republican and the Democrat Party switched. That never happened, okay? One person switched parties. Nobody else did. Fact. They create this narrative every four years that the Republicans are racist. They try to scare us. Are we such punks that we are so scared to try something different? Because every four years they knock for our votes and they say, vote for us because the other guy's racist. Vote for us because the other person is racist. It is time for us to stand up for our community boldly, to look the Democrat Party in the eye and tell them that you are going to fight for our votes. Listen to this, and this is something that you all need to know. If the Democrats do not get more than 85% of the black votes, their party is finished. Yay! Okay? I love it! Candace, you are everything, bitch. Not only do I love her, like, I watch her videos like crazy because I love her. She's like an inspiration for sure. But that bitch, she wasn't lying. I thought, okay, I'll be honest with you. I'll be really honest with you. When she first came out in 2016 and said, I'm going to get that black vote, bitch. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. And I'm going to make black people see. And then I saw all the hate coming to her from the black community. And all the people that hated her. And only the couple of white people that would, like, support her. I really thought, oh, she's not going to get it. But bitch, she got it. She got it, bitch. She got it, bitch. She got it, bitch. She got it, bitch. And I love her so much, bro. 
I love her so much for it. I think she's really amazing. I think that she's getting people to wake up and getting people to really see the truth. And that black summit for Reverend Al Sharpton is... Shut up, Reverend. How are you a Reverend? How are you a man of God, bitch? Like, how the fuck are you a man of God? Like, bitch. I remind Christians every motherfucking day not to judge me because the way I look. And they do. They take that into consideration. They're like, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry. But Reverend, you're a Reverend, bitch. Like, we're all supposed to be looking at you. Like, I don't get it. I don't get why you would put down your own people because they're Republican. And then CNN. Three black reporters on CNN when Kanye West met with the president. They literally, literally said, this is what happens when Negroes don't read. Like, they're black. And they said that. On CNN. And nobody lost their jobs, Roseanne. Just saying. But they, nobody lost their jobs. Nobody got in trouble. I don't care if you're black. If you're black and you say those things, to me, that's still racist fucking comments. I don't give a fuck if you're white and you, if you talk shit about white people, I'm going to say you're racist. If you're black and you say Negro like that, this is what happens when Negroes don't read, that's just as racist. I don't give a fuck what your skin color is, but what you're saying about other people is racist. Regardless. Yes, you could be black and still be racist against black people. Yes, you could be white and still be racist against white people. And no, when, when you hate white people, it's not called reverse racism, it's called racism. Just saying. But um, I think it's crazy that Reverend Al Sharpton would say that on national television. He's like, oh, it was staged because they're wearing red hats. Bitch, we're wearing red hats because we support Donald Trump. We're not wearing red hats because it's staged, motherfucker. You dumbass. Anyway, so um, I wanted to spec- touch base on that. And I was asked today by a couple, um, two people um, now. But one person said um, if I could touch base on the black um, situation in America because it is a big deal. Now, I want to remind you guys who's doing the most for the black community. Was it Obama? No. Of course. Obama thought he did what was best for the black community. Obama thought he did enough for the black community because he was simply black. He thought, I'm black and I'm in the White House. I did my job. It's a lie. You did nothing for the black community. Oh, wait, you're from Chicago. Oh, look at that. You really did nothing for the black community. Holy shit. And you're the one that you think are going to save us? Everybody thinks Obama was the best president ever? I'll give it to him. Obama gave the best speeches. You did amazing speeches. I liked, I even listened to your speeches when I wanted to like listen to a fairy tale. Like, they sound great, like before bed or something. Like, they sound like, oh, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and it's gonna be rainbows and butterflies outside. But you're bullshit. And we know it. Why? Because your great speeches never ever fucking showed us anything. You never did anything. Except for send more, send most bombs during nation's history more than any other war. You sent home the most illegals. You didn't call them undocumented, you called them illegals. You sent home the most illegals in our nation's history. You, what else did you do? Oh yeah, um, your teammate, your friend, the Clintons, they um, put the most black men in prison um, during their reign. I mean, come on. What more do you guys need? I thought just knowing he's from Chicago, and knowing Chicago, how much they never progressed, I thought that was enough to know this motherfucker ain't gonna be right for the country. But it wasn't for people. You thought, oh, he's black, we need this. Well, how much is, if a person is drowning in a pool, how much, how many times do you think there's pigment He's going to jump off their skin and save them? Never. I'm down to put the first black president in a history book. I'm down to recognize that in a history book. I'm down to recognize the first woman president in a history book. In a history book. Again, in a history book. Because in real life, bitch, her vagina ain't going to save you. Like, if you're dying, her vagina is not going to give you mouth to mouth. Like, you know, like, if you're dying, his pigment is not going to save you. Period. So, to judge and to vote based on those reasons, I think, is the most un-American thing ever. Especially when we have fought so hard to become equalized. And, by the way, this is the most equalist country's ever been. We all should be lucky right now. I feel so blessed to be alive during this time in America. Because this is the most equal. Since gay marriage, this is the first time ever we are all equal across the board when it comes to equal opportunity. Every single one of us, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, don't matter. If you're black, you're Mexican, all we ask is you be a citizen. So I wouldn't say everybody's um, equal. <laughs> all Americans are equal. All American citizens are the most equal we've ever been in our nation's history. Ever. 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 I love living in America right now. Like This is our time, guys. This is our time. And if you guys could just get over the social politics and of the... Um, of the labeling people and the um, identity politics, you guys could definitely come and be with us and we could all fucking make the world great again. Which it never really was. So I mean, great for the first time. <laughs> because the only thing fucked up in America is our identity politics. And the, the, who's the one throwing that shit around like it's candy? Who's using my sexuality as a fucking tool? Who's using women's as, uh, vaginas as a tool? And who the fuck is using black people's skin as a tool? Or Mexicans? or Asians. Come on, Yale. 
We all saw what Yale just did for the Mex for the um for the Asians. We all saw what Yale just did. <laughs> we all know what affirmative action looks like. The most racist thing I've ever seen in my life. Masked with beautiful things like acceptance and love. No. Democrats. Y'all be throwing around race like it's my fucking candy. You're throwing around fucking people's sexualities. You're throwing around people's genders. And then you guys are the ones talking about, don't judge us because our gender or sexuality or race. Like, the fuck? <laughs> I don't get it. I, I don't get it. Like, what? Do you want us to talk about race, sex, and gender or not? Because I think if you're going to be offended that I don't know that you're pansexual, then um, don't be offended when somebody calls you a dumb faggot. Okay? Just saying. You don't want identity politics to be thrown around like that? Stop throwing them around like that. Hmm. Do you know how we can end racism, guys? Ready? I have a secret. If this is going to sound crazy. I know a lot of you guys are like, what the fuck? But I have the secret to life. Ready? We can end racism like that. We could simply stop. Whoa! 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 If we simply stop, every baby born at this moment and every moment after this, will just be something they've read about in history. Weird. Weird. I love being in America right now and I love knowing that I live in America knowing that this is the most equal we've ever been yet. So I feel like this is great. Not one law or rule or anything tells us that we are different from one another. So I think that it's a beautiful time to be American. But I also would love to say that I was alive during the time where we ended racism for good. Where we ended sexism for good. Where we ended homophobia for good. Where we ended hate against religious communities. For good. Whoa. How crazy. And did you guys ever think to yourself that maybe radicals maybe happen and are produced because of the fact that people feel so bombarded with their hate? It might even stomp out radicals. Radical Christians. Radical leftists. Radical rightists. Radical whatever. Bitch, radical. It doesn't matter. It could stomp that out too. And um, I just saw a um, comment. Somebody said, hashtag me too. You know, something about these hashtags that become groups, that become um, social justice warriors, I have a problem with. And the Me Too movement is one of those things. Am I against what they stand for? No. I love what they stand for. I love it, love it, love it, love it. I think the Me Too movement was amazing when it was a movement. I think when you guys become a community and a group, you guys become hatred, you guys become, mob mentality takes over and you guys become very hateful and you guys become very full of hate towards other people like, um, I don't know, men. Just saying. So um, the fact that Me Too has sparked this whole now, um, Him Too and all those other things, we wouldn't have to have those things if you girls from the Me Too movement, which is most of you feminists, would just simply realize that all humans should be together as one and if you realize that there's sexual assaults happening to more than just women, then I definitely think that if you guys took Americans being sexually assaulted more serious, then I would stand behind you more. But Me Too is not for Me Too. Me Too is for women only, just like um, you guys do with feminism. And I think that's really stupid because I'm a feminine man and knowing other feminine men, there's feminine straight men, by the way, but if you want to talk about who is suppressed in this country who's feminine, I would say the most feminine people that are suppressed in this country are men. Why is feminism not ever set, talking about or setting up for men that are feminine? What the fuck? We're hated inside the gay community even. Like, we're a preference at this point. Like, femme? Are you femme? Are you femme? It's called femme, bitch. Like, why don't fucking feminists stand up for all things feminine? It blows my fucking mind. Like, poof. Like, if you are feminine, you have the right to be protected by feminism. Isn't that what you would think? But then again, they're coming from the same people that I would think that if I was told I was hated and I didn't have no place on this earth, I would go to a gay pride festival because that's where they're screaming tolerance and love for all. But let's be real, if I showed up there, I'd get my ass kicked. So, those are those same people. Feminist, 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 but let's ignore the feminine men. It's bullshit. And being a feminine man, I'm also going to touch base on masculinity. The fact that this country right now is spitting and shitting on masculinity has got me fucking heated. I may not be masculine or that, I'm a little masculine, I'm a little masculine bitch, I'm a little, I'm a little, but I might not be that masculine, but I, how dare you guys take that away from people? People that are masculine should not be demonized, like, how do you think our daughters are protected? How do you think our feminine men are protected? Bitch, when I get a man, I don't get with a feminine man, like, bitch, my man's a man, like, I'm gonna be protected, bitch, and you know what, like, I think... Things, for instance, we can go as deep as like Boy Scouts. They're only for boys. Girl Scouts. If you girls want to go camping, Girl Scouts, step it up. Don't put girls with the boys. Our boys need to learn how to be around other men 
so they can learn how to be gentlemen. So when they're alone with our daughters, they're better people. Okay? There's actually a method to this madness of Boy Scouts and separating. That's the only time I think separating is okay because I don't give a fuck what you think about sexualities and um, genders or whatever the fuck. If you want to make them different or the same, I don't care. What I will tell you though is men and women are different. Period. It's reality. We're not better than or less than either or, but we are different. We have different roles to play. We have different roles to play um, with mentality. We have different roles to play with our bodies. We are, we are different. And that being said, men need to enjoy their masculinity. Men need to be able to exercise their masculinity so they can um, let it out in better ways other than beating their wives. If you suppress a man's masculinity, it's going to create buildup. And when that buildup comes out, I don't want to be around or I would hate to be the person married to him. I think that you should not demonize masculinity. We should just teach them how to let out their masculinity in a positive way. You know, my grandpa, my grandpa wanted to go to war so bad during the Vietnam War that he lied and said he was 18, but he was only 16. He got caught and went to jail. That's besides the point. But the point is this. That's what our men at 16 years old used to be like back in the day. Now, I can't imagine a 21-year-old holding a gun. I can't. We want to blame the gun issue like on with this high school kid thing about 18-year-olds should not be allowed to get guns. We're only like blown away. And the, it's not that the laws have been so stupid. It's that the laws have always let younger people have guns because back then they weren't younger people. You were an adult by the time you were 18. That was reality. Back before we demonized masculinity. And I'm not for demonizing mas masculinity. I am asking, except people who are feminine. Feminism, you should stick up for them. But we shouldn't demonize masculinity. Anyways, we got way off track there, but... I have some feelings about that shit. So I always had, I always wanted to talk ba touch base on that, but unfortunately, since they're not going on in the news or anything right now, because it's something we don't talk about, it's not something that people want to rush and see when they see my titles. So let's get back onto track. So Black America, as you guys know, are they're doing really, really well. So next thing I want to talk about was speaking of Barack Obama. <laughs> Trump, bitch. Do you know what Trump did? Okay, Trump. <laughs> Sometimes I read his tweets and his fucking things, and I'm like, oh my. Good. Like, did you really just say that? But let's be real. If you know humor, if you are an American with a funny, sassy, or kind of sideways opinion like me, bitch, I get Trump. I get him. I get him. That's why, like, I listen to his stuff and I, I read between the lines, I see what he's saying, as opposed to, oh my god, did he say that word? Oh, I don't do that. But anyways, Trump posted this. Trump said, I agree with you, um, Obama. Trump said, I agree with Obama 100% in this video, okay? Trump posted this on Wednesday. I agree with President Barack Obama. We simply cannot allow people to pour into the United States undetected, undocumented, and unchecked. Now, this is Obama. This is your leader, Democrats, who um, is saying the same exact thing that we're saying right now. But why are we racist when we say it? But it's okay when he says it. Because he's black. Oh, that's racist in itself. Anyways, Trump posted this. People here in the United States, but those who enter the country illegally and those who employ them disrespect the rule of law. Uh, and they are showing disregard for those who are following the law. Uh, we simply cannot allow people to pour into the United States undetected, undocumented, unchecked, and circumventing the line of people who are waiting patiently, diligently, and lawfully uh, to become immigrants in this country. Now, um, that is exactly what Trump has been saying, but he's racist. That's exactly what we've all been saying on the right. And for any of you guys watching that's retarded, we're not against immigration. We're against illegal immigration. Why? Because the word illegal means against the law. That's why. It's simple. It's very simple. It's not hard. And um, before you want to go on and say this caravan of people, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of sad, sad people, um, refugees like... Socialist Okaza Cortez has been preaching about. Let's show you a video of what they're looking like right now. Okay. Let's see you guys' people and how these are the oppressed refugees. Breaking down the wall in Mexico. comments. Oh look, Adidas, that backpack looks really expensive. <laughs> oh, 
Look how peaceful they are. God bless those refugees. Now, before you move on any further, I have to say something. Did you guys just now see that in the video? Did you guys just now see that in the video? Money, this goes on for four hours. But did you guys just now see that video? The camera passed by a white guy with a helmet on, with the GoPro on the helmet, and he's dressed all like he's the he's media. Okay? Did you guys see that in the video? Let's see if we can rewind it for you guys. But I just want to show you guys our pressed refugees that need us right now. Oh, I think I went too far back. But this is for four hours. If you guys want to see, I'll put the link down below. If you guys want to stare at them for four hours as they break down the wall, throw rocks at all the people there. And they also are trying to hurt people. They also are fighting. Oh, and they're drunk and they're breaking stuff and glass and stuff all over the floor. And yeah, look at all that trash on the floor. It's beautiful, isn't it? These are sad people. Oh, I feel so bad for them. Look at how peaceful they are. Okay, now it's going to come up. It's going to be over. It's going to be over. Here, watch the guy on the helmet. Watch. You know, you'll see it for just for a split second. Right when they get up to the fence, you'll see it. Oh, look, there's another one. Boom, boom, boom. Media, 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 media. See him? See him? You guys see that? See that? See that? Make sure he stays on camera now. We might find out about you guys' little caravan experiment. They're so peaceful, aren't they? Oh, such loving people. So peaceful. Oh, can't wait till we get here. Mm. These are the poor refugees. So sad. That's my check that DJ. Oh, they'll put him right on camera. See them? That's the media guys. The white man, the white guys. White guys sitting there with all those cameras. Hmm, I wonder what news channel he works for. Woo! Woo! Those are sounds of peace and love. Oh, yes. They're peacefully taking down the border. Peacefully. They're throwing rocks of love. So oppressed. Look at oh. Oh, they're just hurting the cops. No big deal. Rocks of love. Yes. Peaceful people. Uh, I can't wait till they're in our country. If I see one more goddamn Adidas backpack, I'm gonna be mad. I've been trying to buy that since last year, and it's always sold out on Amazon. I'm pissed off because I want it. It's like $400. Just saying it's really expensive. Oh, somebody just commented, how are we going to stop them from storming into our country? We have a thing that Mexico is really bad at having a military. But the children, where are the children? Do you see children? I thought it was women and children. I don't see any women or children. That's weird. Where are the women and children? Oh. Again, they're throwing rocks of love. Because remember, they're peaceful people. Fake Adidas? <laughs> no, it's real bitch. That's why I'm mad. Because I saw it. And I was like... It's real, I swear, it's, 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 it's a good fake. Uh, there's just women and children, no big deal, guys. Anyways, go down for four hours, so let's see um, what happens in like three hours. What is it saying? Does anyone know what they're saying? I really want to know. Ooh. So they're so peaceful. 
There's just refugees and look, rocks of love, guys, just peaceful people. We should let them in. We should just let them in. There's the rocks of love. They're not, they're not evil people. They're not mean at all. They're loving people. They're refugees. They're just people that simply want to live a better life. Yeah. They're just women and children. They're just women and children. You're not having fun throwing rocks at all. That wasn't a laugh you heard. That was cries. Cries of excitement to get to America. Oh, they're not violent at all. Kamala Harris, you are right. They're just refugees. They're not violent at all. You just, you're crazy for thinking that. We're all crazy. This is a stupid right thing to say. The people on the right just think they're violent and crazy. But they're not. They're peaceful women and children. They're not being paid. They were just handed that money because donations. That wasn't money. What are you talking about? Oh, look. Hey, the party goes on four hours. I wish I knew what they were saying. And there uh, they're off. Gets to the border now because the police went away. Right off into the sunset with your peacefulness and women and children. <sighs> Bitch, that was fucking four hours. And that is not from a rightist thing that you guys think I'm always posting about. That's from the El Informado. Yeah, it's a Mexican um, news site from hashtag Ultima Hora. Hashtag Ultima Hora. Suganda Caravan Migranti Diraba El Cerco. <laughs> I'm bad at this, okay? I can't. I can't. I can't. I'm trying to offend nobody. I just I can't speak Spanish. This is what it is. But if any of you can read that, it's something in Spanish, and I don't know what it says, but all I know is that this news site is not an American site. This is not a rightist kind of um, right-winged crazy thing that you guys always think I post from. This is actually from the source itself. I think it's very important to see both sides, but I definitely don't see another side to this other than Kamala Harris and a couple of other people like Okazo, Kuroba, whatever, the idiot, you know, the dumb bitch you can't fucking know math that's from New York City? Yeah, her. Well, um, I think I see a bunch of dumb-ass fucking idiot politicians standing up telling people, they're victims. You're stupid. You're not getting the black vote anymore because we all know now, learning from Candace Owens, if you do not get 85% of the black vote, you will not have anything to stand on. So you're losing the black vote because why? It went from 4% supporting Donald Trump to 30% supporting Donald Trump. So now it looks like you need to bring in the illegals. It's funny how the, you're pushing this migrant caravan at the same time you're pushing the don't need ID to vote and pushing the also sanctuary city in California. Hmm. Here's the only thing that I have to say about this. If you seek Amy, no, I'm just kidding. So, if you Democrats have so much firm ground to stand on with your views, why do you got to do this? Why do you even need illegals? Why does it bother you when we say you should have ID to vote? Why is that bothersome to you? I mean, I can't think of one benefit from that, from not letting people be ID'd. Now, if we had the foreign votes, if people say that they want to come here and vote Republican, and we said, okay, let them in, the Democrats would have our necks. They would say, how dare the Republicans invite people who are not American to vote in America, is what they would say, right? But because they are on the fucking left, of course they're for it. Of course they say these mongrels and these gangsters and these horrible, fucking violent people are victims and oppressed. Hmm. Don't forget this, though. This is one situation I want you to always fucking remember. In America, the government doesn't make us up. We are Americans. Without us, America's nothing. Where they're from, their country, they made their country the way it was. They made the country. Yeah, the government's shit. Who voted them in? Them. Let that sink in. Just like I think about the same thing I have to say about racism, same thing I have to say about sexism. You guys c cannot really possibly believe if you put another man in the White House, it's going to change the way you think about me when I walk down the motherfucking street. 
Socialistic problems are not important to the government. Socialistic problems should never be important to the government. When we focus on those things, Obama, that's when we fucking lose our money, that's when we drop the ball on what's really important in this country. Socialistic problems can be fixed easily, only by us. Put whoever they want in the White House, bitch, ain't gonna make me like you, or not like you. That's nothing to do with the way I feel about you. Our neighbors, we're gonna feel each other about each, we're gonna feel a certain way about each other the way we're gonna feel about each other. Only we can stop these things. Only we can stop our social problems. Only we can stop our fucking hate. Only we can stop that. Stop depending on the government because you simply just don't want to take responsibility when it's your fault too. We're all guilty. Don't rely on the government for socialistic problems to be fixed. Don't rely on the government to be our referee. We're not children. I know you guys are acting like it, but we're not children. What we need to rely on the government for is our money, our protection. Our borders, our voting, hell yeah, our voting, you need to show ID. Our children, our education, and our fucking import-export. That's what we need our government to work on. Stop asking them to help you fucking like somebody better. Or stop telling them, they don't like me. Shut the fuck up. If you want them to like you, the government can do shit about that. You're going to have to go and get them to like you. So, these amazing, innocent women and children, you, as you guys saw, they throw rocks of love, and they are so peaceful. Which brings me to my next question to the Democrats, which you guys never answer any of my questions. Why do I always ask you guys questions? I always ask them questions in my videos as if they answer. If you guys answer, I would love it, but you never do. But maybe you will this one. Answer this. If you support the caravan, even if you're on the right, if you're on the right or left, it doesn't matter. If you, a human being, support the caravan, tell me this. How do you feel about the fact that we have yet to say publicly what we're going to do with them when they get here. Or better yet, here's a better question. If you support the caravan, then tell me, the day they get here, let's say, let's say hypothetically we all supported the caravan. They walk over the border. Now what? Where do you plan for them to go that night? Are all the Democrats going to open their front doors and let them in their homes? If so, you, if you believe in open borders, why do you have locks in your doors? If you believe in open borders, why do you have why do you lock your car? Because people steal in the world, yeah. Mm. So why would you let them in your home? This country's our home. So if you believe, don't get it twisted, bitch. I ain't against immigration. I'm against illegal immigration. Why? Because illegal means against the law. Let's refer to that anytime you guys want to say I'm against immigration during this talk. But let's go back to what I was saying. So if you think that the caravan should be here, bitch. Okay. The second they walk across that border. Now what? That first night, where are you going to have these women and children sleep? Hmm? Or these big fat men that are apparently women and children. Where are you going to have them sleep? <coughs> how do you plan on feeding, <laughs> feeding them? And <coughs> how do you feel about... <coughs> 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 how do you feel about Kamala Harris and Maxine Waters being two of the biggest supporters of the caravan in California, knowing that... Kamala Harris runs San Francisco with second biggest homeless population in America. And Maxine Waters, her district in LA is Skid Row, the biggest children homeless population in America. How do you feel about that? So do you think that that's the plan for them to be homeless? Because they gotta do that at home in Honduras, right? But maybe even had a house that they were getting evicted out of or whatever because they couldn't afford the rent. But they still would have had a house for a couple days. In America, once they step over that border, tell me, bitch, what do you plan to have them do? Let's say, hypothetically, our army wasn't going to go kick their ass because we are. And that's sad that you're going to use their lives as fucking disposable fucking people. Because they are human. And you got them all up in their feelings. Now they're coming and we got to put them back in their motherfucking place. And bitch, we're going to hurt people. Because America don't play. We're going to hurt people. Because of you. These are innocent people. Well, not so much anymore. But they were innocent people. We're going to hurt them because of you. And you don't care that we're going to hurt them. That's what makes me the most angry about you, Democrats. You don't care that we're about to hurt these people. But we're American. We need to protect our borders, and we will at all costs. But again, answer the question. Like I said, hypothetically, let's say we all supported them. Once they step over that border that minute, what, do you, what are you planning on doing with them? Hmm? Where would they sleep that first night? I've heard the caravan's grown to 14,000 people. Where will they sleep that first night? How will they eat? I know that these people in the video for four hours straight was just only men and no, not a woman and child in sight, but there are women and children coming. Have a heart, like you say you do when you want their vote. 
They're not disposable. They're human beings. If you care about human beings, where do you propose they sleep the night they get here? Are all you Democrats going to open your front doors and let them in? No, you're not, are you? But you support them coming. For what? Because America's land of opportunity. Stop with your words and your make-believe fucking life. America is the land of opportunity. The opportunity to come here legally. The opportunity to get here. And when you're here, to create a better life for yourself. Legally. Within the law. Within the morality. That's why when you have a work visa, you can't break the law at all if you're applying for citizenship. What benefit could you get from them being here? Other than the vote. Drop the votes. Because we get it. You guys want the illegal vote. We understand that. Because you're that desperate. Because you can't stand behind your values. Because they're not that firm. <laughs> Just saying. But what do you propose that we do with them? Let's see in the comment section. I haven't checked the comments yet. So see in the comments if anybody left anything. What do you... There's 70 people watching as we speak. I want to know... 72. I want to know what you guys believe we should do with the caravan. Let's say, hypothetically, drop your feelings of the caravan. I don't want to see any comments saying, fuck them, fuck them. I get it. We all say fuck them. But I want to know every single person here, your opinion. Let's say, hypothetically, we all supported it. Let's say, hypothetically, what do you think we should do with them when they get here? Start the comments. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's go through the comments. If I haven't seen nothing. I see a lot of truth on here. They do want tyranny. That's fact. They want the worst possible outcome. They can blame on Republicans. That's fact as well. And the sad part is they use their own people as ammo. They throw women at us. They throw sexual assault victims at us. They throw kids at us. They throw gays at us. They throw everybody at the Republican Party. And I'm sick of it. Like, I'm, my sexuality is not a toy for you, bitch. It's something I overcame. Something I... um made life a life with and something I now celebrate. I'm not letting you take that from me. I'm not letting you take my fucking struggles and use it to your political gain, Democrat. Sorry. I'm not a victim, bitch. I'm a victor. Because I live in America. That's why. I was able to come from poverty, being homeless, and fucking take care of myself to put myself in school to now having my own motherfucking place, my own motherfucking car, my own motherfucking life, bitch. Every camera you see me on, I pay for it with motherfucking cash. That's why I love being American. Direct travel to Pelosi's house. Woo! Brian Barnes, you are right. We should do that. On your nuts. What do you propose we do with the caravan? Let's say hypothetically we all, we, let's say hypothetically we all support the caravan. They get here and they walk across the border. Then what? What is the plan for them, Democrats? Anya, I ain't coming for you, girl. I love you. But I'm just saying, I wanted to know because you're a Democrat, I think, and you came on here and I saw. So I just wanted to ask you, do you have a plan for them? I do agree we should support human beings. We should love people who are actual real victims. We should always take in people who are, who are actually applying for asylum. But what do you think we should do with the caravan when they get here? If you support them, tell me what you think we should do. Because don't just say Dem uh, Republicans are evil because we don't support it. Let's say we did support it. What the fuck is the plan for them when they get here? Oh, you stop watching. I saw your picture, but then you went off, so... It's crazy. That's the second time somebody said, um, straight to Pelosi's house. I'm okay with that too, girl. That's the only time I would say, army, back up, let's create a line. Make them walk straight to their house, bitch. There is no plan? Oh. 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 There's no plan. You guys probably thought about that before you made people trek across 1,700 miles. Like, the people you care about, the people we don't give a fuck about, apparently. You guys care so much. So much. But you don't fucking have a plan for where you're going to put them when I get here? I think you guys only thought, let's get them here and put them in our polling stations, have them vote that day, and then fuck it. Anything the Republicans do from there, we can blame it on them and say that they're evil people. I see you, bitch. I see you, bitch. I see all you motherfucking Democrats right now. I see you. I see it, bitch. I see it. I see your plan. I see your plan. Well, I firmly am against you voting without ID. I'm firmly against anybody who doesn't live in America to vote in America. Why? Because you're not American. That's reality. That should not be... Why is that hard to comprehend? Like, I don't get how that's rocket science to people. But the people you guys care about, you guys can blame on the fucking Republicans all you want because we're getting stronger. 
The more you guys pull these stupid ploys and stupid identity crisis bullshit fucking stories, the more you guys throw more of your own people at us, is the more votes you lose. Because the more people are walking away, the more people are waking up. Good morning, Black America. And the more people that are coming to our aid because we are realizing you are wrong about the Republican Party. You have always been wrong about the Republican Party. You have always been the ones who are separatists. You have always been the one labeling. You have always been the one who are racist. And now you want to bring all the people from Southern America and really, really use them as ammo? And just hoping that the ones that break it through our army votes for you? You're pathetic and you're sick. Because we're going to hurt them. And I'm sad about that because they are human beings. And they don't even know what's coming because of you. Because of something you support, bitch. If you don't like the presidency, if you don't like the way things are going, you can vote every four years. Welcome to America. You have another chance. Stop going crazy. Calm it the fuck down. You can never go back in time, bitch. 2016 ain't going to happen again. <laughs> Unless you are aware for 2020. Because 2020, we're going to win again. Just saying. But because of the way you guys are choosing these ploys with identity politics, I hope you guys never get back in office again, ever, ever. I'm afraid. I'm afraid for my children. I'm afraid for my future. I'm afraid for me as a gay, homosexual man in fucking America when you motherfuckers are back in charge. And I'm not going to be a victim anymore. I'm going to whoop your ass. Just kidding. I'm not you. I'm not violent. But and I don't support violence. But I can say I have sat in sometimes and wish that I hope... Hillary just falls down an escalator once, just one time. But that's not violence. That's like accidents. You know what I mean? There's a difference. <laughs> I pray for accidents, bitch. I don't even believe in God. But, um, <laughs> but anyways, I want to go on and talk about these things. So let me get, know in the comment section below what you guys think about these situations about black America and about this caravan. And um, what you guys think about the fact that Obama literally got on camera and said the same thing we're saying about immigration and I'm going to end the video today with that so um, you guys can be remembered that um, President Trump on Wednesday made this post and said I, I agree with um, President Obama I was like you Trump I see you I see you Trump I see you sarcastic ass motherfucker I love you but watch me <laughs> it's the funniest thing I've ever seen Trump post but this is from Trump here in the United States but those who enter the country illegally and those who employ them disrespect the rule of law uh, and they are showing disregard for those who are following the law. Uh, we simply cannot allow people to pour into the United States undetected, undocumented, unchecked, and circumventing the line of people who are waiting patiently, diligently, and lawfully uh, to become immigrants in this country. Just saying, we agree with you, Trump. I mean, Obama, we agree with you 100% because that's what we've been saying, bitch, all the time. That's all we're saying. And for you to go on um, TV and talk shit about us, fuck you, because that's what you said, bitch. We, we're following your rules. So when you guys are like, Obama started it, and um, Trump's just basking in, like, the the, the, the the loving of it, or, like, whatever, the economy, whatever you guys want to say about your fucking dick sucking of Obama, <laughs> whatever. I get it. But what do you guys think about this? You're right. Obama did start something that Trump's keeping up on, and that's immigration. So remember that when you think about this caravan, okay? Bye!